Hey YouTube, it's Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters. Today I'm going to be doing an Ableton Live tutorial for you guys. And this one is about how to create basically a master set list in Ableton of all of your backing tracks to use in a live situation. And what I mean by that is what you're looking at right here on my screen are 10 of my songs all in one Ableton session uh, that I can control via the scenes in Ableton. And they all have different tempos and they're all set, you know, to different time signatures or, you know, most of them are the same, but the ones that need to be a different time signature are. And so basically I can have a click track and the music going on in my headphones. And then if I wanted to, I could send the uh, audio only without the click to speakers or front of house or something like that if I wanted to uh, perform this stuff live. For the time being, I'm just doing it all in headphones. But this is how you could use Ableton Live in a live situation uh, for playing music, uh, filling in parts that you don't have enough musicians for, etc. So what you're looking at here, like I said, is my set list. So if I just go here over to the scenes and the master, let me make sure my click is on. It is. One, two, one, two, three, four. So that's one song and we move over one, to the next one. Two, one, two, three, four. Let me get to one that has more synths and stuff going on. So let's skip over to this one. Okay, so as you can see in the mixer settings here, or in the mixer, not settings, but in the mixer, uh, we have all the different tracks. We have MIDI track here, which actually that isn't being used currently, but we also have a count in track. Uh, which is just me counting this, the song to start. And then we have bass track, guitar tracks, uh, some synth tracks, and sound effects tracks. So you can set these up however you like, but I'm going to show you how I got to this stage uh, in, or how I set all of this stuff up uh, to basically have all these different tracks and have all the different songs on different scenes here. So in order to do this, you first need stems of your music that you're going to use in Ableton Live for your backing tracks. Now, you may be asking what stems are. I mean, I'm assuming you know what they are, but I'll just go ahead and explain it anyways. If you don't know, stems are basically the individual tracks of each song. For example, each one of these tracks has stems in it. So this is a stem, this is a stem, this is a stem, and th that's a bass stem, guitar stem, uh, etc. Now you could do this with, uh, there's a couple ways you could do this. If you know exactly how you want your backing tracks to be mixed, you could have a mix down of those backing tracks and just have, you know, basically one stem uh, with the mix down and then like a count in or something like that. And you don't need all these separated tracks. But the reason why this is better is you have individual control over the levels of each track, as well as say, you know, sometimes you have somebody who's going to play guitar parts, you know, guitar one guitar parts, you could easily just mute this track and then that person could play live. But if that person's not there, then you could just bring them back in the mix. So it's a nice way to have a good solid backing for your music live. And it's not that hard to set up. Now I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to do is actually create another uh, track here. I'm just going to add one. And when I say track in this uh, regard I mean another song so let's go ahead and open up one of those songs so I'm going to go here to open live set okay so this is basically a song that I created in Ableton Live and this is actually a pretty uh, simple project it's just straight up audio there's not a whole lot to it um, but this could this same method will work in whether you have audio or MIDI or however you compose your track and you could do this from a different DAW to start with. You didn't have to create your project in Ableton to begin with to use Ableton this way. As long as you can get the stems out of your project, uh, you can import them into an Ableton uh, master set list file um, like I did. But I'm going to be showing you how to do it in Ableton just because that's what I use. And it's really pretty easy to do it this way. So what I want to do is create stems for everything but the drums because I'm going to be playing drums live with this stuff. 
All right, so what I wanna do now is actually export the tracks that I want to be my stems into a stems folder. So what I'm gonna do is select the first track that I wanna export, which is old guitar here. Actually, no, I don't wanna export that because I'm not even using that one. I wanna select G1, which is guitar one, and guitar two and bass. And then all I have to do is click the top one, then hold down shift and then click the last one. And now all of those tracks are selected. So the next thing I wanna do is go here to export audio video. And then up here where it says rendered track, I'm gonna go selected tracks only. And then I click export. Now I had already created a folder for my stems here, but you might wanna create your own folder just so you can keep them organized. And I have a stems, like master stems folder, driving songs is the name of the album. And then LeSabre is the name of this song. Now I'm just gonna click save. And now it's gonna export those three tracks only that I need the stems of into that folder. And one thing I forgot to do there, uh, which I'm gonna go ahead and do this again because I, I like to do this as well. Let me export one more time. And I'm gonna overwrite my old file. Well, actually, let's just delete these. Delete, delete. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is just type in the BPM, which is 174 BPM. And the reason why I'm doing this is just so I can remember later when I look at the stems, so I don't have to open up the project file again to see the BPM. So now I'm gonna click save. Okay, so it, it exported those three tracks. Now let's go back into my live session folder or live set live folder, my live set session. That's what I meant to say. And open that up. Okay, and here's what you just saw. So now first I'm just gonna add a new scene here. So it's right click, insert scene, or you can just press control I. And we're gonna go down here to my recordings folder and find my stems folder that I created. Go into driving songs, there's Le Saber. And this is why I type in that BPM. So now I can see 174 BPM. So what I'm gonna do here is type in 174 for my BPM and this song is in 4.4 so I can leave that alone. And I'm gonna rename it to Le Saber 174 BPM. And I don't think I spelled the saber right on my original file there, but whatever. Um, so, okay, so now all I have to do is just drag these into the correct channel. So we have bass, guitar one, and guitar two. And this song only has three backing tracks, so that's all that needs to be in there. Let's turn on our click. And now let me play this. And that's pretty much it. Now, what I like to do too, on songs like this that kind of come in suddenly, I like to put in a count in. So this way I know exactly when I'm supposed to come in on the drums because there's not always the same amount of clicks before every single song that I record. So I'm gonna turn that on and let's hear it one more time. Okay, so I pretty much, I can count this in pretty straight ahead like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now if I go down here, I have to move this out of the way a little bit. I can't see my, ah, can't see the waveform because of my web, webcam. All right. So now if we go here, 
and turn off loop. And my count it might be a little bit late there, but let's hear it. One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, a little bit. So I'll redo that count in later after I can see the screen better, but that's pretty much how you do it. Just make sure you turn off loop so it doesn't keep repeating the count in after it goes, or after it starts, rather. So that's pretty much it. It's really not that difficult. And then what you could do is we notice if we go through here to the if we go here to the master and hear all the different songs. One, two, one, two, three, four. You can hear all the different tempos. One, two, one, two, three, four. And time signatures. One, two, one, two, three, four. And it's really cool. And then what you could do is you can actually map all of these scenes uh, to be able to be launched from a MIDI controller or a drum pad or some, you know, thing. So you don't even have to touch your laptop. Um, if you wanted a, you know, a mixer on stage, you could have all of your levels mapped to a MIDI controller. So you could, you know, have faders to turn tracks up and down if you wanted to. There's really a lot that you could do with this. It's really, really cool. And it's not that hard to set up uh, once you get the hang of it. Now, if you are using a different DAW to start with, you could just ex you could still export the stems from whatever DAW you're using and then just import them the same way I showed you here in Ableton and use Ableton as your live backing track uh, program. So anyway, hopefully you guys found this educational and helpful. Uh, let me know what you think. Post a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon. Also check out my music uh, on Spotify and Apple Music, there's links down below, and anthillrecordings.bandcamp.com, which is my Bandcamp page. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day. Later.